the system is built on fiat money and it's built on the organizations that were basically set up after the Second World War. So when we had the conference in Bretton Woods, when the US uh, was the winner of the Second World War, they basically invited uh, uh, old white men. I have nothing against old white men, okay? But uh, it was like 60 white men who from Europe and the US who basically decided the fate of the world uh, for the coming 50, 60, 70, or maybe 100 years. We don't know how long the uh, hegemony of the petrodollar, petrodollar is going to last. But basically, those people um, started uh, international organizations and the financial system of regulations that basically is now excluding two billion people worldwide because um, they can't uh, have IDs, so they don't have papers, they can't KYC themselves, or they are too poor to, to be uh, have a bank account, or um, they, the banks are not uh, there where they live because um, it's too costly to have a bank somewhere out there in the rural region. So basically, there are no banks. And even more, like most people in African countries don't want to be in a bank. They don't want to have a bank account because they are totally unreliable, very bureaucratic, very expensive. And um, it's basically something that happens to everyone and anyone <laughs> here and there uh, that they close your bank account. Yeah? And even more, if you're in a, basically an activist a, a working for freedom and against these authoritarian rulers, that are sitting or, or having power, holding on to power in many of these countries for decades, actually. And so that's where Bitcoin comes in. Um, and where I see, or many of us Bitcoiners see a great potential. Um, but it's also difficult because there have been so many scams around Bitcoin, you know, like uh, all shitcoiners copy Bitcoin in a way. And um, in the African regions where I have been, the first question people asking me is mostly, Bitcoin, is it not a scam? Um, because everyone has been scammed in one or the other way. Um, and so there's a lot of distrust. And sometimes I, I have the feeling that people don't want to use Bitcoin because they can't believe it's true. Um, and they rather go with what they know, so with the problems that fiat money is bringing them, because they are aware of it. They already manage, you know, they, they know their ways around and what to do. So sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm really, to be honest, a little bit disappointed that people don't see <laughs> um, the advantages uh, that Bitcoin could bring them. And also... Um, I have to be quite honest about that, I think, because um, we, we think or when before I went to African countries, I really thought, yeah, people are using Bitcoin. No, most of them are using USDT. Yeah, they want stable coins. Uh, for instance, in Zimbabwe, 80% uh, of the people who use cryptocurrency use USDT and 20% Bitcoin. And so um, that's also interesting um, because people don't understand it seems that the inflation they have on their own money is basically losing them more so they lose more value with the inflation than if they were to sit out the volatility of bitcoin but of course the problem is people can't save like we can so they need to spend immediately or they can't risk losing any value uh, because they don't have a lot um, so there are many, many opportunities, and um, but still the system that the US and European countries have built are basically built on rules that favor them. And um, also like um, exactly what Alex Gladstein is also always saying, um, it's a hidden repression with all these credit uh, and, and loans that the International Monetary Fund, et cetera, that they are giving to Zambia or Zimbabwe or all these countries, they are basically indebting those countries. And that's a, a circular, a deadly spiral in a way, I would say. 
And, and on the other hand, I, I always say, yeah, but with Bitcoin, those countries, um, they can um, use their vast um, natural resources to mine Bitcoin um, and, and build their self-sovereign uh, monetary basis. But I don't think that these governments, like in Zimbabwe, for instance, uh, that they want that because then they would... Um, they wouldn't have their own system anymore, the fiat system with which they make their money. So I believe a lot of people also in these um, areas of authoritarian uh, leaderships, they use Bitcoin. I'm quite sure about that, but uh, they don't want their people to use it, of course. Hello, my name is Anita Posch and if you liked that video, please subscribe to my channel now to inspire me to create more content like this. And if you want to learn more about Bitcoin, then sign up for my free weekly Bitcoin newsletter at anita.link news.